What's up, Humble Power Ass Crew? Today's video is about a topic that plagues many, many YJs, also CJs. This issue I speak of is wet floorboards. You know, when it rains, you wonder, why the heck am I getting so much water on my floor? Is my top leaking? Is my door leaking? Do parts of the leak even coming from? That's what we're going to look at today. Before we get this video started, if it's the first time you guys hit Power Ass YouTube channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I do Jeep videos, car videos, motorcycle videos, tool videos, all kinds of cool stuff that you just might learn some. Be sure to hit that subscribe, hit that bell notification so you'll be notified when I release this cool video. Alright, let's get on with this. These are rigs you got two different places you can most commonly get water from. It's going to be down inside this grill here, which is where you get your fresh air from whenever you sit your uh, heat and air conditioning or whatever you may have. And it pulls, extracts air from the outside into the cabin area. This is where it's pulling it from, from inside here. The other place is this seal right here. And you can see mine's had better days. Definitely has better days. I've got a new one in the house. I just need to get around to changing it. But since I haven't changed it yet, it a, makes a great opportunity to find out where is my leak coming from. Now, some of the other less common places is going to be like underneath here. Sometimes your water will pull underneath that, um, uh, that uh, channel up there where I'm hooking my soft top at. Now, if you refer back to one of my other videos, you see that I uh, put new uh, nut serves inside there, or some call them rib nuts. And plus, I put a gasket along through there too to prevent all that. Before I replaced the rib nuts or nut serves or whatever it is you want to call them, going down the road, I used to get a lot of air force coming through here, obviously, from them hitting the windshield, the rain crawl up, it gets inside here, and it would blow under that, that channel, the top channel. And it would actually rain inside my Jeep from up here. Yeah, that was interesting. I wish I had the video footage, but I got like delete happy on my phone and well, oops, I deleted the footage. But like I said, that's one area up in here. But whenever you got kind of dripping from under your dash, that's gonna come from down into here. Like I said, most common being here, here, less common is along the through here. Ouch, and it's hot. Around your windshield's pretty not very common. And I have heard of it being leaking coming in around your uh, squirters here. Not likely, but I have heard of it. So, what do you do? How do you find out where the leak's coming from? Let's get on with that. I'll show you. Now, before we pull out the water hose and start chasing down where the leak is, there's kind of a, I don't know, systematical procedure, if that's even a word, that you really should follow to accurately diagnose where the leak is coming from. You got to work your way from the bottom, work your way up. Why? Because if you work your way at the top and work your way down, just or haphazardly, haphazardly shooting water anywhere and everywhere, water runs downhill. So if you started somewhere up top, say for instance, if you started with the windshield seal here first, the water will run down into this windshield seal, and it also running down into that ductwork right there. Then you got water in the floorboard, and you're like, oh wait a minute, it's coming from right there. Then you go through all the trouble, put a windshield in to discover guess what? You still got a leak. Why? Because you need to start from right there. Try that first. Try that next and try that next. Work each way at the bottom because like water flows downhill. Go here first. If you get, uh, if you got a leak, then you know what then we'll talk about from there. If you get right here, you know you got a leak. You know that seal right there's gotta be replaced. If you get up here, it's gonna be the windshield seal and you have to pull the windshield to reseal it. So first things first, let's throw some water down. This bad boy right here. Now actually, just for kicks and giggles, because I've heard of it right there is your uh, squirter. We'll put a little bit of water on it first. Not likely, but I've heard of it. But just to be complete about this, we'll go that front first. It's kind of funny how I'm kind of have it went over my head. But it works. So what you want to do is slowly, yeah, that's real slow, wasn't it? And keep the water running around this right here and kind of keep it from going down inside the vent. As least as possible, at least I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit down inside, apparently. Now, like I said, I've heard of it going inside here, but I'm not really buying it. But just to be complete, I'm going to try it anyway. And honestly, before it's going to, you'd have to actually add a lot, a lot, a lot of water. So, hit that over there a little bit. Keep it off the grill so I don't run it downside it. Then we'll go over there and shoot the water to it. 
Okay, I've been holding water on the squirters for quite a little while and I've not got any kind of leaks coming through the floorboard whatsoever. Uh, the other option is if you want to pull this off and see if you got water going in below, but I don't suggest it quite yet. Because if you have your seal around this and your seal is intact and you're just putting water on this right here, you're going to get some runoff going inside there, which may lead you to a false positive somewhere. So let's just say hypothetically, you keep running water inside this right here and you end up getting water going under. What do you do? Take those screw right here, take that screw right there to dry it off real well and get you some body caulk or just regular black RTV if you want. Put a little bit of black RTV under it, screw it back down and you're good to go. Now, where's the next place we're gonna test? Hmm, what do you think? Yes, we could do that, but we're not. Right through here is where we're gonna shoot the water next. And the reason I say this, if you look down inside here, real close, see those cracks? There is a possibility that after some of the time the cow in this part of the tub right here, a little bit of separation, you'll end up getting water down inside there and it'll run down to your floorboard. So what I'm gonna do next is set my water hose up right up in here and allow water to run both sides of this bead and let it sit there for a little bit and see if we get water introduced into the floorboard. Okay, still standing there holding the water hose, but you notice where I've got position is that I've got the water pretty much free flowing over top of that seam where the uh, cow joins the tub. And just allowing it, because it's running all the way down up the side, it's following that groove all the way down the side. Of course, that's only testing the passenger side. So what I do, I let it run there for a little while. Then I go over and I'll peek underneath it to see if I got any water flow coming down on the passenger side behind the uh, heating, cool, heating air box and all that fun stuff. Now that I've run the water down through there quite a bit for quite a while, you can see right here I've got some pretty good um, gappage going on between the cowl and the body because of that dent right here. Now I didn't do that dent that was there before when I bought the Jeep. Let's see if we got water. Look down in here. It's still bone dry and dusty. Might have to vacuum saying that one these days. But anyway. But you see, so far we got no water. I I I look at yonder. I thought, wait a minute, just right after I said that there was no water. And I seen a little bit of a trickle. So I went and grabbed a flashlight real quick just so we can look. And look right there. See that line? We got a wet line. There's a slight little trickle of water that was running down through there. So, yep, we got water coming in around the cow. So, let's test the driver's side now, see if we got it going over there as well. Okay, I got lucky on this side because I can come around here, hook it on my antenna here, and which will support the hose and allow me to not have to hold it. So, it's not a ton of water as you can see. You just want to pretty much free flow down that seam right there. Oh, I don't know if you guys got one near you. This place right here is pretty, pretty cool. Rock climbing wall, indoor rock climbing. Yes, the one in Nashville has like 40 foot walls. Pretty darn cool. Let's point and see what we got. Now you see it was just a steady stream coming over top of that seam. It's running perfectly right down through here where those cracks are. Do we have water yet? No, I do not see a T at all yet. But you can see how I've been getting it because of all that rusty, crusty crap. I got a gallon of uh, bed liner, but it's black because it's for a different project. Uh oh, we got water right there. And it's running from up in here. So it's running down that seam right there. So that would be here. We're getting water coming in. So there it is. There's another place. So that's two leaks we got going on so far. And where I said before, no, most time it's commonly here and downside here, but we can't rule those out yet because we haven't tested them yet. But like I told you, you want to start from bottom up. We started at the squirters first, got no water. Now we're testing the seam here, and what do we got? We got water. So at this point, we need to test someplace else. So in level of bottom up, 
We went here, we went here, and now we gotta go down in the cow. Let's fill that baby up. Now let's test the cow area. You see I've repositioned the hose. It's still hanging, kind of looped over there around my antenna. Coming up behind the windshield wiper where it's shooting straight down into the cow right here. Why am I like that? Simply because I want the water to go into the cow and not be right through here. As you seen a moment ago, we had a leak coming right off through here. So if I was to position the hose to where, you know, I get a little bit of runoff through here, I may be getting what another, I guess you might say false positive, but it's a, a positive that we've already found. We want to just test it for a different source now. Water's running down south of the cow right here. Got a little bit of runoff out of here, but that's okay because all that's gonna do is get the hood wet and drain off down inside the firewall. You see over here, it's all dried up. I got no water seep stuff through here because we don't want that over here. But what I do have is a little bit of what's coming through here, coming down and seeping back a little bit. But hey, we can't, we can't get everything. So we got the water going into the cow, but we also have, look at that, we got a ton of water coming out down here. What does that mean? For those of you who, are, who know the YJ, you know exactly where that's coming from. But let's pop the hood to show those who do not. And now that we got the hood up, let's see if we can show you where that water's coming from. Right down there. Let me see if I can zoom in slowly so I can catch where it, there it is. See, there's a drain tube right there that, that water runs out of, which comes up right through there. And you can see it. Oh, no, no, I can't see my fingers out. So it's glare on the viewfinder. Oh, there it is, right there. That's your drain tube right here. It's coming out of the cow and draining down this way right here. And the water's running out right there. Now what happens oftentimes, down there, you see it's not draining or super, super slow. The water's gonna build up inside that tube right there. Then it's gonna get the cow area all flooded. Then you'll get water running inside your interior. So what you end up having to do is, you take that end right there, and on the end of from the factory, they're kind of, they come down round, then it squishes kind of flat. But what happens, all that trash comes down through the cow area, gets built up in the end of that. So what you gotta do is reach underneath there and cut the end of it off to where it's per to the point to where it's round. It's like, zoom back a little bit here. The end of it's kind of squished flat like this, then it tapers outward till it's round like this. So where it goes from here, to there, that transition, you gotta cut it to where it's round, to cut that transition to where it's like this, cut that off. Because what that does, is one, it uncorks your water and allows it to flow. And two, it being rounded, it allows it to continuously flow and doesn't get stopped up again. But we got great water flow here, and so it's been running for a while actually, because I put, started the water flow Ran inside, made me a sandwich because I was hungry. So yeah, we got good, 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 good water flow right there. I just looked under the dash to see if we got any kind of water leakage. Shouldn't, so we're gonna look either way. Okay, so zoom back a little bit. Looking right here, you can see where it's a little dark over the corner where it leaked a few minutes ago. If you listen real close, I'm gonna shut my mouth for a moment. Listen real close. Here's what it sounds like raining. That's that water going inside the cow right there. So let's go over and check the driver's side now. So here we are on the driver's side. Again, I've got no water leakage anywhere. It's all dry. Again, it's tucked up the side here. Listen real close. Sounds like it's rained up inside that cow, doesn't it? 
Well, that's okay. It can rain inside that cow all it wants to, but as long as it's not coming inside, it means we're good to go. So, again, we're dry. So, so far, the only leaf we found is coming right through here. And that's where we would have to get some more body caulking and come in here and prep that up and drag some more body caulking in right here and right through here to seal that up. That's not going to be part of this video for today. I'm going to do that a video later on. But basically, that's what you would do. Get body caulking and drag it in there and drag it in there. No reason you don't want to use like RTV or something like that. RTV, if you want to come back and paint it, the paint will react to the RTV and it'll crawl, fish eye, all kinds of weird crap off of it. Versus body caulking was made to be painted. So that's why you would use the body caulking. You pick it up at most of your auto parts, your better auto parts places. We've tested the squirters. We've tested where the cow meets the body. And now we have tested down inside the cow. Where have we gotten leaks so far? Well, where the body and the cow meet together, that body caulk line, that's where we found the leaks so far. But there's still one more major place we need to test. That windshield seal right there. That was dried out, dry rotted, cracked, busted. I really expect to get a bunch of water out of that thing. So let's get that hose positioned and we'll test it next. Well, I repositioned the hose a little bit, get a little bit more forceful, not cranking it wide open now. But a little more forceful pressure going in behind that seal because I still don't have a leak on the inside, which I'm not complaining, don't get me wrong. But, you know, I've seen an awful lot of water in the floorboard in the past. And the reason I say in the past, I'm going to be a little bit more specific about that comment. If you guys refer back to a past video where I replaced that um, channel up there, the screws, I put this threaded insert, zerk nuts, or uh, what, what do you call them, rib nuts, whatever. It's inside this right here that holds that channel for the soft top. Now, once before, whenever I would get a ton, a ton of rain here, what I would get is water dripping right through here and dripping down on my feet. Now, here's what can happen. That channel right there that's holding your soft top, if it's not sit, sit down firmly, if it's not uh, sealed, that water will come like a capillary effect to come up the top of your soft top here, run under and weep and get sucked underneath that uh, channel right there, going in through the holes, because especially if it's all worn out, those screw holes have to get all stripped. Refer back to the video. I'll put a link so you guys can go back and check that video where this uh, holes were so damaged. But what will happen, those uh, self-tapping screws going up through the top of this will be wide open. Water will run inside there and it's hollow all the way down through here so water will fill up inside the frame here. Well, when the water fills up inside the frame, it builds up inside here, and you've got holes in the bottom of the windshield channel here that squeezes in between this gasket. Next thing you know, it squeezes back in behind here, and it gets down behind here. Next thing you know, you got water dripping on your feet. Okay, the past couple of rains, I've noticed I've gotten less water. Yes, I've still gotten some stuff like this right here, but that's the runoff, like I mentioned a moment ago, of this right here. But as far as the dripping on my feet, I haven't seen as much, and it just dawned on me because I'd put a gasket underneath that channel up here when I replaced those uh, self-tapping threads, uh, self-tapping uh, screws with the um, rib nuts or, or nut serves or whatever you want to call them. When I put that gasket up there, that stopped, that prevented the ability of that water rolling off the soft top, tucking under that channel, then getting inside the frame, running down, then running down to your feet. So I can't get water from the top of the frame anymore. Because my gasket, I don't know if I can see it, that right there is the edge of my gasket right here. So from this point here where it's hanging over, it's just gonna run down the channel and be gone. And that's been going now for a good, 10 minutes now. Now still, still, don't have any water running down from up in here anywhere. And you see I've got this right here going on, but I showed you where that was coming from. But running from under the dash, I've got nothing. Now just for demonstration purposes, I've put the hose up on top of it so you see how the water looked right. Can't see the viewfinder. Look right there, see where the water's trying to run under that lip? That's what happens. It comes off top of there and it tucks under and you've got that um, channel right there that your soft top hooks into. 
if perchance that channel is leaking, that water will run under the channel and into the holes where the self tapping screws are, then it'll fill your windshield frame up and it'll leak down on your feet. There's my dad. See the yellow TJ? Where is he at? Where is he at? Where is he? There he is. 2006 TJ. That's what my dad drives. He lives next street over every now and he'll drop by and say, What's up? So as you can see, the water's running off. It's going under that lip right there. And as I said, if you've got a leak under that aluminum extrusion that you hook your soft top onto, it'll run under that aluminum extrusion. It'll run inside the holes where the self tapping screws are. And it'll run down inside the frame here. It'll come down inside the frame right here. Fill up down inside here. And you've got holes in the bottom of this frame right here. Eventually, it'll drain off into your floorboard. But putting that gasket underneath that strip right there has prevented, has stopped all that. And again, I'll put a leak for you guys to see where I've corrected all that. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit me with a thumbs up. If you learned something, hit me with that thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, you definitely want to do that because I release these cool videos that might give you a little bit of an education. Yeah, I went all country on that with education. Also, subscribe. Oh, I already said that part, didn't I? Oh, hit those comments down below. Tell me where you have found leaks on these YJs. Was it in your cowl? Was it on the windshield seal? What did you experience? Because you can tell, if you go in the comments and say what you experienced doing this, not only you just know, replying back to, we're acting as a community here, but you're also, your comments can be educational toward other people, helping them diagnose issues with theirs as well. So, throw in your comments of what you found, what you did to correct it, and it helps everyone who reads uh, the comments in these videos. Cool? Sweet. So everyone, again, thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't. Really cool comments to help people. And don't forget to share. Share this on your Facebook. Share this on your uh, Twitter. Share it on your Reddit. Whatever type of social media you use, share these videos out. So therefore, it spreads the knowledge and helps anyone and everyone that's looking for these type of issues that needs to correct them on their jeeps, okay? Share these out. I make the videos. You guys share them. It helps everyone. Cool? Sweet. All right, everyone. Well, I can go through all that. Subscribe, thumbs up, hit the bell notification, don't forget that. And comments, share. Most of all, I really appreciate you guys hanging out. Peace out. Love y'all.